All right, it is time now to head back to Cannon Falls where they're drinking some wine. Yeah, Frank and Amelia here, you had a, a pretty fun afternoon. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a lovely, uh, charming place to be. You know, uh, we actually came south uh, for our road trip. We are, uh, Cannon Falls is almost smack in between Rochester and the Twin Cities, so really, really easily accessible. And they have an industry leader here, if you think about the wine industry, which has really uh, been growing and really improving in Minnesota over the years. Yeah, you can find it right in the heart of downtown Cannon Falls is the Cannon River Winery, which is a dream come true for owners John and Maureen Maloney. We are a staple of the town of Cannon Falls. You know, Cannon River Winery is one of the big attractions to the to the town. The downtown winery looks like it was always a part of Mill Street, but it started out as a stable for horses. So this is our newer wine. This has an apricot and peach. Now tasters line up at a former soda fountain bar to try Cannon River's Minnesota inspired wines. Minnesota is kind of a, a difficult place to grow grapes. Head winemaker Sam Jennings says their grapes are special, developed at the University of Minnesota to survive Minnesota's harsh winters. Marquette, La Crescent, Frontenac, Gris, Frontenac, Noir, um, there's a new variety that just came out named Itasca. Sam says if you pick one bottle during your visit, you should try their Reserve White. This is a blend of 100% Minnesota grapes. It's La Crescent, uh, St. Pepin, and Prairie Star, all barrel aged in Minnesota oak barrels, which is kind of neat to be able to use Minnesota oak for aging the wine. Pour a glass and you'll also get hints of vanilla, coconut, and caramel. It's a wine that showcases Minnesota grapes and the Cannon River Winery. It's, it's a great place to come visit. It's a great place to come sit down, have a glass of wine, enjoy the nice weather. Uh, indeed, especially when it gets a little drier out. Uh, this is the wine that Sam recommended, and I think this, I mean, this was my fave. What about yours? This was. This is the White Reserve, right? It is, 2014. Mm. Excellent. Keep it it's chilled a good year. in the river. <laughs> so uh, this is really sweet. So what the Maloney's did is they took all four grandmothers and they named a wine after them. So on Maureen's side, uh, Grandma Roselle, they named a rosé after her. And then uh, Grandma Irene, uh, she loved berries, so they named the Moscato after her. Yes, then on John's side, there is the German Grandma the Lorraine. There's a white Riesling named after her. And then there's Grandma Gogo's Red, which is the most popular wine at the winery. And Gogo, -Go, the kids couldn't call it Grandma, so they called her Gogo, -Go, which is really, really cute. So That's really cute. I'd say we, uh, the rosé was wonderful, too. We, we taste tested a bit, and it's, all, it's amazing that this is just... 50 minutes away from the Twin Cities, an hour away from the Twin Cities. It's a place to stop when you're going down Highway 52. If you yeah. see it pull over, you'll you'll find that winery and many, many other things to do. And we'll show you some of the history of the town, ladies, uh, yes. coming up on our uh, show at 6 o'clock. Yeah, uh, it includes an oversized pair of overalls. We'll oh. explain. So you want to okay. tune into that. All right, it sounds like emergency responders are close, so don't be driving, guys, after that wine. <laughs> Take it easy. Be well, safe. you know, uh, know. What? When Amelia drinks on the air, the police come out, <laughs> as well they should. <laughs> they know her. All right. <laughs> I'll Thanks, try to guys. be calm.